people in Australia. The white folks are Aboriginal brothers and sisters, and we haven't solved all these problems together, but let me tell you, there was a new beginning because we had gone not just to the head, we had gone also to the heart. So where does that conclude in terms of the great question that we've been asked to address this evening, which is the future of US-China relations? The head says there's a way forward. The head says there is a policy framework. There's a common narrative. There's a mechanism through regular summitry to do these things and to make them better. But the heart must also find a way to reimagine the possibilities of the America-China relationship and the possibilities of China's future engagement in the world. Sometimes, folks, we just need to take a leap of faith, not quite knowing where we might land. In China, they now talk about the Chinese dream. In America, we're all familiar with the term the American dream. I think it's time across the world we were able to think also of something we might also call a dream for all humankind a dream for all humankind. Because if we do that, we might just change the way that we think about each other. That's my challenge to America. That's my challenge to China. That's my challenge to all of us. But I think where there's a will and where there is imagination, we can turn this into a future driven by peace and prosperity, and not once again repeat the tragedies of war. I thank you. But here's the difference. See, for a five versus a four. So for a four, all that energy and ambition and drive is about them. It's about what they get. It's about how they look. It's about what they make. It's about what accrues to them. It's about whether they are the center. That's a four. Fives, all that same level of energy and drive and ambition is channeled outward into a cause, into a company, into a culture, into a quest, into something that is bigger and more enduring than they are. Level fives lead in a spirit of service. you come to an inevitable conclusion. The answer, the cause of why one becomes great and another not cannot be their circumstance. So if I were to take one giant lesson from all 25 years of research, I'd put it to you right up front. Greatness is not primarily a function of circumstance. It is first and foremost a matter of conscious choice and of discipline.
，鲁国要想强大，可否效法齐国呢？君上，齐国的老百姓不犯法，是因为他们害怕刑法；如果人们不犯法，是因为他们讲礼义、知廉耻、有品格，那不是更好吗？选贤能，修信用，贼不做，谋不用。人不但只爱护自己的父母子女，也爱护别人的。男人安本分，女人有归宿。不论是孤儿寡母、老弱病残，都能得到照顾和供养。这样老百姓才能安居乐业，才是天下大同啊鲁国愿与齐国以礼相待，勇气干戈。齐鲁两国虽然是异姓诸侯，实则为手足之邦。结盟之后，两国合体无间。如同一国呀，李大夫所言甚妙。四海之内莫非王土，率土之滨莫非王臣。所以，两位君上都有为周天子守土之责。But these changes also offer great opportunities for individuals and for organizations if they can seize them before it's too late. It's the too late that's the problem. So I call this the second curve. The second curve, the second opportunity has to start before the first one peaks in order to give you time to get it going. In this video series, I am being purposely provocative in order to challenge your views of the world to come and to help you to find your second curves. I'm sharing the result of years of experience and studies to help you understand these changes and to move forward. I like to use metaphors and unusual stories to challenge conventional thinking. And I want you to use your imagination to challenge conventional wisdom, to be creative, to think of new ways of doing things, and to do it all before it's too late, to change your life, in other words. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. The goal is not to do business with, anybody, with everybody who needs what you have. The goal is to do business with people who believe what you believe. Here's the best part.
OK， 总结我的看法，我的中心概念还是在用杯子理论和现在进行式的一个中一个中国来重新建立一个中国的定义，并且朝着共同缔造论的方向来移动和发展，或许签签订一个和平协议，最后也可能就进入了大屋顶中国。那么这个就是我一直讲的，从合理的过程到改善的目的啊，过程论比目的论要更重要。那么从杯子理论到大屋顶中国，一路走到底都是筷子理论，也就是一路走到底都有连接点，也有主体性。那么，终于说到最后了，最后我们好像还有一个问题没有处理，大家会不会问为什么要如此维护中华民国呢？因为两岸问题它不是一个力量对力量的问题，而是一个文明对文明的问题。什么叫做文明？是文明对文明的问题，而不是力量对力量的问题呢？也就是说，中华民国要说我是中国的，我不是台独，所以你不能打我。而且，中华民国更要说我是民主的，我是民主中国，我要在世界文明的水准上和在中国文明的水准上，我要在文明上和你来对话。啊，我们要来撸撸看，因为中华民国是五千年来中国实现的唯一的民主政体，这个是一个在中国历史上和世界历史上非常重大的文明成就。为了台湾，为了两岸，为了中国，为了世界文明，都必须维护中华民国，谁都不能把中华民国一笔勾销。那么，以上是我在两岸关系看到的泛古的画像。